I was just out there taking a ride on this 2003 CRF 230F and I was thinking, dang, I really enjoy riding this bike. I could ride this bike all day. And bam, just like that, it was decided that I would take this bike and make it my weapon at a 24 hour endurance race. This time, the goal was to make the bike feel so perfectly right for me that it would be an absolute pleasure to truly ride all day at a 24 hour endurance race. And hopefully making the bike that way would help me actually get through the whole race without passing out this time. So I signed up for the race and started evaluating the bike to come up with a game plan. The first thing I knew I had to address was the fact that this thing had me scrunched up like a bear on a tricycle. To do that, I installed Carmichael bend bars, which don't have much rear sweep, on top of mounts that move the bars forward into a much more standard position. At the same time, I threw on some Tusk hand guards because Glen Helen, where the race would take place, is a bushwhacking extravaganza. Next, I needed some ability to adjust the clutch on the fly because the free play was just walking all over the place when the clutch would heat up. For that, I threw on the Tusk Quick Adjust Clutch Perch. Of course, the general state of external disintegration was making this bike feel quite clapped when it was in fact not yet clapped. Therefore, I installed new lock-on grips, a Neutron gripper seat cover, a new front fender, fresh Tusk brake pads, a fresh Tusk brake rotor, and a fresh steel braided brake line. Then it was looking kind of minty, but still feeling pretty meh, because as you know, the suspension is just okay on these bikes. So I yeeted the stock suspension and replaced it with KYB open chamber cartridge forks with Racetech base valves in the front and a Voncat El Jefe shock in the rear. After after a few rides to get the suspension all dialed in, this thing was feeling way better than I can make use of, but it wasn't ready yet. To make it through a 24 hour race, it needed a few extra little fixins. Due to my tendency to make tires deflate and wheels explode, I needed fresh wheels and spare wheels and everything that makes wheels and tires last. Rocky Mountain ATV MC, gracious as they are, bestowed it all upon us. Fresh steel sprockets, fresh bearings, fresh tusk tires, and nitro mooses all came pouring out of the delivery truck so that I could have two totally solid wheel sets to make it through the race. This was looking very promising, but how would I see in the dark? An insanely bright Tusk light bar powered by a fully wound stator, of course. If I couldn't outpace the competition, at least I could melt their eyes out of their sockets. The bike was ready. It was time. The green flag waved and hell broke loose. The bike was feeling great and I was feeling strong. As the laps ticked away, I found myself mid-pack in the largest Ironman class I've yet yet seen. The 230 was eating that course for breakfast and putting out really nice lap times while making me feel right at home behind the bars. Things were getting better and better until it all came to a stop when I had a total electrical outage. I brought the bike to the pits for repair. Soldering irons smoked and sparks flew while the crew bypassed all of the everythings, putting this bike into battle short condition. We lost an entire hour getting back into the mix in the back of the pack. But in a 24 hour race, being an hour behind is far from game over. The midday air became still and hot, and the event turned into a grind to survive until the cooler evening air. By the time the heat dissipated and the sun was going down, I was back in the middle of the pack where I had started. The nighttime action provided new stimulus, which charged me with a second wave of energy, a wave that I rode until somewhere around 3 a.m., which is when I really started to feel like I should have sold all of my dirt bikes a long time ago and and stayed in school. So at that time I pulled into the pits and I found that my friend Stuart was staying up to keep me on track. We had made it up to fifth place at that point. So Stuart was like, hey, how about instead of stopping, you just keep going and you go faster and you gain more positions. And I was like, hmm, the logic is there, yes. So I got back out there in John Wick mode. I passed into fourth, then I passed into third, and then I lapped them both so I could have enough of a gap to eat the free pancakes in the morning and still finished on the podium. All that because when I was reaching a low point, someone told me to be strong and keep pushing instead of letting me be weak. Definitely something I could have benefited from during some of these other difficult challenges that I put in this playlist for you to watch right now.